and welcome back to Sarah's Music. Today we're at the Barbican Centre in the heart of London and as part of the Sound Unbound Festival, this weekend every corner of this huge building is full of music and other really cool events. <laughs> This is the main concert hall of the Barbican Centre and the home of the wonderful London Symphony Orchestra. To start off the festival, they are treating us to some John Williams. We have a fantastic bird's eye view over the lakeside up here. I love it. As head of music of the Barbican, what is the idea behind this weekend? Uh, Sound Unbound is a weekend of 60 concerts, over 450 performers. And the idea of the weekend is really about showing people that classical music has no boundaries. It is limitless. And really, there's something for everyone. So often there are lots of different concerts going on at once. And people have to make choices. And they have to choose their journeys. And everyone is having their own individual experience of this. Everyone is taking their own journey through this. And that's what's incredibly exciting for us. And I saw a tweet calling you the Woodstock of classical music. The Woodstock of classical music, that made us so happy. We felt uber cool at that point. And, but it really did get the, the sense that this is a, an, a, a weekend of celebration. It's a weekend of informality. It's a weekend of fun. No performance really lasts more than about 45 minutes. So people have got lots of short, sharp chances to go and hear lots of different things and, and really expand their horizons because it's a chance for people who know a lot of classical music to hear something very new and for people who haven't been to many concerts before really to, to also hear some of the great classics. <laughs> I adore your orchestra, what oh, energy! Thank you. thank you, that's very kind. Tell me, what is your motto? Our motto, to take music wherever we can for free to people that might not usually get it. Like? Uh, we've been to a refugee centre, a detention centre, prisons, youth centres, uh, like the outskirts of London, the outskirts of any area really. I just love it, that everybody's young, they're beautiful, <laughs> they're really enjoying your music and it just yeah. looks like classical music is cool and fun. Yeah, I mean classical music is cool and fun. Absolutely! So. <laughs> Upstairs in the conservatory, we discovered an unusual piece being performed. Timber, a 55 minute piece played on eight pieces of, well, timber.
The silent opera was also performed up in the conservatory. The audience had to wear headphones to hear the voices in the music mix, and without them, all you heard were the singers. This meant we were free to roam around and follow the action. Daisy, that was really incredible. I mean, I, I had no idea what to expect. What was I actually listening to? Uh, that was a selected excerpt from Carmen that we've weaved into a kind of new narrative of the whole piece uh, set to uh, new electronic school. Yes, I recognised the piece, but I wasn't quite <laughs> sure. I didn't recognise the, 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 the orchestration of yeah. it. So what, what was going on while the singers were singing live? So the singers sing live and then we've created a pre-recorded orchestral track that is made up of some orchestra, some MIDI, sounds, some pre-recorded speaking, some kind of memories from, from the rest of Carmen. So we've kind of put it all into a melting pot, put it through a computer and created a new score. And silent opera, what is your what is your aim? What, what do you do with this? It's a great idea because people's, people are mobile, they can walk with you, but, but how did you come up with this amazing idea? <laughs> well, I really love opera and I think that no one can doubt the intensity of being st stood next to an opera singer. Is that, you know, the power of their voice, the physicality, you know, I want to see them sweating, I want to see the whites of their eyes, I want to see that really up close. And I thought, how can I pick up an orchestra and a chorus and move it around with the singers so that the so that the audience can be as close to the singers as as you know as I am in a rehearsal room for example um, and then I was looking around on the train and commuters in the morning and everyone is plugged in everyone's on their phone listening to podcasts listening to whatever iPods and I just thought how could you do that with with opera and then I thought about silent disco, which is where everyone's like clubbing on their own tracks. I thought, oh, I'll put the two together and I'll make a silent opera. <laughs> Fabulous, thank you so much. Thank I absolutely so loved much. it. Thank you. <laughs> and now my favorite moment of the day. I had promised to organize something for the festival myself, so I held a horn flash mob. So many London players turned up, including the London Symphony Horn, students, amateurs, and as a special surprise, my friends from the band of the Coldstream Guards and more of their horn colleagues from the other British Army bands. That's all from Sarah's music for today. So much music here at the Barbican. I loved it, but I'm exhausted. See you next time. Bye-bye.
So for the horn challenge, I was thinking about all the cool acts here at Sound Unbound. Who could do the horn challenge today? And we've picked the head of music at the Barbican. Hugh, take it away. I feel like I'm being given a Stradivarius. This is a, a Berlin Philharmonica's horn. <laughs> I've never done that pretty, before. That was pretty good. <laughs> I've never done that before. We've still got that. I'd like that in the...